Mars. Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Bruno Mars. Peter Gene Hernandez, 10F. 18018 off the 9 o'clock calendar. What are we doing here today? What's up, guys? It's Jason here, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Celebrity Insight. Lauded as the next big thing in pop, Bruno Mars is the pop superstar who made it against all odds and then lost it, or at least some of it, through a series of very public missteps in the same vein as Justin Bieber's 2014 DUI or Lindsay Lohan's 2007 arrest for DUI and felony possession of cocaine. <laughs> Mars, born as Peter Jean Hernandez, on scenic Honolulu, Hawaii, was raised in the tourist-filled neighborhood of Waikiki and perhaps had music in his blood. Both of Mars' parents were musicians, with his half-Puerto Rican and half-Jewish father a percussion musician, and his part Filipina and part Spanish mother a hula dancer. From rather middle-class beginnings, as of 2021, Mars is estimated to be worth $175 million and has sold more than 130 million records worldwide. Such a meteoric rise raises a lot of eyebrows, and so does Mars' relatively recent scandals that have shifted the focus from his musical talents to his extracurricular activities of the illegal drug sort. Despite his controversies, Mars is climbing his way back up to musical and pop cultural relevance again with the release of a new album after a recent collaboration with musician Anderson Pack as the collective Silk Sonic. In this video, I'll run you through how Bruno Mars became the worldwide superstar he is, how he temporarily lost his mojo, and what he's doing to regain it. By the end, you'll be a Bruno Mars expert and you'll know exactly what happened to Bruno Mars now. But first, I just need a quick favor from you. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm, it would help me out a ton. The more engagement a video like this gets, the more likely the YouTube algorithm is to push it out to more people to enjoy. And as this is a brand new channel I started this year, it helps me out a ton and is free to do. If you enjoy videos like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for new videos each week. Thanks for doing that. And now let us continue on with the rise and fall and rise again of Bruno Mars. Young, ambitious hustler. As he was born in America, Bruno Mars' nationality is American. Bruno Mars had a normal middle-class childhood until his parents got divorced when he was 12 years old. As a result of that divorce, Mars and his father found themselves finding refuge in the back of a limousine and random rooftops where they could stow away. Perhaps that early experience with both music and financial difficulties fed his abnormally heightened ambition about what he felt he was good at and liked from an early age, music. Undoubtedly, given that both his parents were musicians, Mars was probably more exposed to the life of a musician than those who grew up in a household where both parents have a 9 to 5 office job. In fact, his family made money on Waikiki Beach partially by performing a mini concert of well-known hits ranging from 1950s doo-wop to Motown audience pleasers and celebrity impersonations. Mars even commented that, I've always had a drum set, a piano, and a guitar, and never got trained to play. It was just always there. That's just how I learned just being surrounded by it my whole life. Like many other self-made people, Mars mastered entertainment and music by simply just doing it. At the ripe age of four years old, he joined the family's Waikiki Beach act as the showy Elvis impersonator who soon stole the show. The positive response to his Elvis impersonations eventually led to Mars doing Michael Jackson impersonations as well. Quite ironic since his singing style, in particular his falsetto and energetic dance moves, would later lead to many comparisons between himself and the Thriller star. Mars started to act on his passion for music while in high school. He started a band called The Schoolboys with a few high school friends and continued to perform with his family at the Ilikai Hotel in Honolulu. He observed that the non-stop immersion in entertainment was integral to his development as an artist as performing from such a young age just got me so comfortable on stage. That success in Hawaii only fed his ambition and contributed to his decision to move to Los Angeles after high school. A star is born in LA, but slowly. At 18 years old, Mars snagged a deal with Motown Records in Los Angeles 
Despite seemingly starting off on the right foot in the entertainment industry, Motown Records never actually released any of Mars music and the deal just died out. What? While Motown Records wasn't the home for him, Mars made industry contacts who eventually formed the studio hit trio, The Smeezingtons. The Smeezingtons, in particular Mars, provided background vocals to smash singles including Flo Rida's Right Round and the chorus for B.O.B.'s Nothing On You. In 2009, encouraged by his success as a songwriter and having proved himself as a vocalist for They Got Nothing On You Baby <laughs> Sorry about that. Proving himself for singing Nothing On You, he signed with Atlantic Records. His solo debut album, Do Wops and Hooligans, paved the way for Mars to become a household name. Peaking at number 3 on the Billboard 200 in 2010, it featured several Billboard topping singles such as Grenade and The Lazy Song. The album has aged incredibly well. By 2017, it was certified six times platinum by the Record Association of America RIAA, because it had sold about 2.6 million copies. It even garnered Grammy nominations for Best Album of the Year and Best Pop Vocal Album. Mars had proven that he had, indeed, learned the lesson that you have to write the song the world is going to want to hear and play it over and over again. I learned that the hard way here in LA. Hawaii had given Mars the entertainment experience he had needed, while LA had become a sort of school of hard knocks, where he learned that opportunity came with catchy songs and he had to write them himself because no one would do it for him. 2010 Arrest and Learning from the Mistakes as he was experiencing his first big commercial success, Mars also hit the headlines for having cocaine on him in Las Vegas. The result? In order to avoid spending time in jail, Bruno chose to plead guilty to felony drug possession, serving 200 hours of community service, enrolled in a drug counseling course, and paid a $2,000 fine. Later on, Mars told 60 Minutes that he did something very stupid, and that being 24 years old meant he was drinking way more than I'm supposed to be drinking. And it was so early in my career, and I always say that I think it had to happen. That was the reality check I needed. I promised myself that, you know, you ain't ever gonna read about that again. Mars seems to have taken his promise very seriously because his second album, Unorthodox Jukebox, in 2012, debuted at number two on the US Billboard 200 became the best-selling album globally of 2013, having sold 3.2 million copies by that time. Perhaps most notably, Mars was able to achieve a dream that many artists are unable to achieve ever. With his second album, he won the Grammy Award for the Best Pop Vocal Album. Mars' performance at the Super Bowl halftime show only helped him further increase his visibility and pop music clout. Singles such as Locked Out of Heaven and When I Was Your Man and Treasure and Gorilla showed the versatility of Mars' musical sensibility as well. It was the perfect demonstration of his appreciation for genres ranging from R&B and funk to pop. Mars' commercial success and mass popularity only increased with his third album, 24 Karat Magic, in 2016. For anyone who thought that Bruno Mars might have been only a fluke in pop music, this album's more commercial themes of being successful in relationships proved them wrong. As of 2017, the albums had sold approximately 1.6 million copies. It earned the accolade of being the US fourth best-selling album of the year. 24 Karat Magic did not do as well in Europe, but it still debuted at number three in the UK. Overcoming the language barrier, it also debuted at number three in France and climbed to number four in Spain. His artistry and appeal was also recognized by his fame at the 60th Grammys as it won Album of the Year, Best R&B Album, Record of the Year, Song of the Year, and three other Grammys. Mars absolutely dominated the night. In an interview with NME, Mars was straightforward about the fun aspect of 24 Karat Magic, explaining that, for me, 95% of music is about love. That's why cavemen were hitting stones to get everybody around the fire and get them feeling sexy. It's exactly the same principle, the same thing. Just get people on the dance floor, get the girl smiling. With this album, Mars had expressed the feel-good factor of music that didn't need to be profound, mopey, or overly romantic. If nothing else, the three albums demonstrated Mars' versatility in songwriting and morphing his image as it suited him. 
while earlier singles such as When I Was Your Man painted Mars as a lovesick and heartbroken young man, more upbeat singles and music videos like 24 Karat Magic had Mars reinventing himself as a more R&B hipster icon. Turning a weakness into a strength At the beginning of his career, Mars was hindered by his ambiguous identity, especially his racial identity. Mars had previously explained that early on. I think everybody don't know what color I am. It's like, he's not black enough. He's not white enough. He got a Latin last name, but he doesn't have, he doesn't speak Spanish. Who are we selling this to? Are you making urban music? Are you making pop music? What kind of music are you making? I never understood. I never understood. Rather than dwell on that early setback due to his mixed heritage and interest in all sorts of music, Mars focused on making very mainstream music to make himself a household name. Once he established himself as a force to be reckoned with, he took advantage of that same ambiguity and made music that seemed not only reminiscent of Michael Jackson, but Justin Timberlake as well, or Ed Sheeran. As his versatility became obvious, what he looked like became less important. Informal Hiatus and Comeback The de facto hiatus of Bruno Mars could be interpreted either way. A long time coming because of the almost non-stop commercial success he has had, or a surprise because of that same success. After all, who would want to take the risk of losing their spot at the top of the pop music kingdom? Apparently, Mars, because he hasn't released a full-length solo album since 24 Karat Magic in 2016. Meanwhile, he has kept himself busy as a sought-after collaborator. For instance, in February 2019, he collaborated with Diva Cardi B for the hit single, Please Me. As could be expected, the two celebrity singers together resulted in a single that peaked at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100. It was a success not only in the USA, but in other English-speaking countries as well, including the United Kingdom, New Zealand, and Canada. As recently as February 2020, Mars was keeping himself busy with a Disney partnership that would eventually see Mars starring and producing in a kid-friendly movie. There aren't many details about the Disney movie, but we do know that it will be a music-themed theatrical narrative. I for one am very excited. So that brings us to today. With the rise and eventual fall of COVID-19 and the subsequent isolation that many people found themselves forced into, Mars was no exception. He continued to write music and also announced the upcoming album with rapper Anderson Pack, having formed a band together called Silk Sonic. The album, An Evening with Silk Sonic, has the first single off it, Leave the Door Open, that was released on March 5th. It didn't make a huge impact on the American airwaves, but it did become number one in New Zealand. The Pack and Mars collaboration came about organically since they had toured together a lot in 2017. Mars jokingly acknowledged his fans' anticipation of this new music from him as the recent Grammy nominations came out this year as well. He captioned an Instagram post, If you don't release music, you can't lose any Grammys. It was a bit of the humor that endears Mars to many, but also makes the release of An Evening with Silk Sonic hotly anticipated. In March 2021, Mars and Pac performed their sultry singer for the Grammys in a very Motown style of fashion and ambience. The showmanship and vocals of the performance earned Silk Sonic a lot of positive press. It might have made some fans wish Mars would release another solo album. It might have made other fans wish Mars would just release anything, whether as Silk Sonic or Bruno Mars. As a Mars fan myself, the Grammy performance only made me love his music more. I probably speak for a lot of people when I say I'm eager to hear the rest of An Evening with Silk Sonic. So, with that said, thank you so much for watching my video as this is a brand new YouTube channel I started this year. There was a significant amount of research and production that went into making this video possible. So if you wouldn't mind giving the video a like and leaving a comment in the YouTube section below, it would really help out a lot. Are you a Bruno Mars fan? Did you learn anything new from this video? Be sure to check out some of my other videos like the rise and fall of Britney Spears and the rise and fall of New York. If you're a foodie, you'll love my video on In-N-Out Burger and why they're so successful. Thank you again for watching and stay tuned for another episode of Company Insight next week.